emergency! Ah, what's happening? There's an emergency. What is it? What can I do? Stick around and you'll find out. Welcome to you two, Spain. Let's dance quickly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scats, and this is Walter Ego. Hello! And this is Tommy. Oi, oi! And we're going to tell you what to do in emergencies or situations that need reporting to the police in Spain. So it's not an emergency? Not right now, but it's good to be prepared. You nearly gave me an heart attack! Sorry, Tommy. Let's get straight into what you need to know. Oh, go on then. There is an amazing and very handy app that you can get for your smartphone called Alert Cop. Oh, is this an advert? We have to buy something. No, it's a free app that's operated by the National Police, Guardia Civil, and the Ministry of the Interior. And you can use it to report any type of crime, like robberies, assaults, fights, sexual assaults, acts of gender violence, hate crimes, home occupations, animal abuse, missing people, bullying and vandalism. Is it in Spanish? Not only in Spanish, it's available in a few different languages, including English. That's very handy. It's more than handy, it can be a lifesaver. There's even a GPS locator, so if you're the person who's lost and in trouble, you know where you are. What if I need immediate assistance? Well, there's an SOS button you can activate and that sends an urgent message to the the emergency services and to a friend or relative if you've set that up on the app. Don't tell the wife! I think she'd want to know, Tommy. Oh, well, suppose so. So, are you both going to put the app on your phones? How do you do it? If you've got an Apple phone, click on the App Store and search for Alert Cops. This is what it looks like. If you've got an Android phone, search for it in Google Play. It looks very similar. There's a link below in the video description to the app's website that has links to both. Is it difficult to sign up? No, it's really quite easy. Shall I show you what signing up looks like? Oh, yes, please. OK, so once you've loaded up the app to your phone, open it up and you'll be asked for your name. Put that in and click Continue. You'll be taken through a series of screens, each with the Continue button at the bottom, and that will set up the app just for you. What's on the screens? The first one is all about privacy and this tells you that your data and location are safe and won't be shared. That's good! The second one is just agreeing to the terms and conditions. Then there's the agreement to share your location. Now, even if you don't normally like to do this with apps, it's best to set this to allow always, because if or when you're in an emergency, you don't want to be fiddling around setting up your location or answering loads of questions. I'd be panicking! You might be, yes. The next screen is setting up notifications and alerts. If you allow that, the app will be able to send you notifications when necessary from the emergency services. The next screen is Level of Security. As you can see, I've got it set to High, which gives you access to all of the available services. I'm not sure why you would want any less than that, but I'll leave that to you to decide. I'm setting mine to High to match my anxiety level. No need to panic, Walter. This app has got your back. I feel much better now. Good. You'll feel even better in a minute because the next setup screen is called Guardian. Does that get you a free newspaper? No, Tommy. This is to set up an alert to anyone you choose. Just one person? No, you can set up multiple names. They'll all get a message at the same time as the emergency services. You just have to add their names and phone numbers to this part of the app. What happens if I forget to do it on the setup screen? That's no problem. You can get to that same screen from the home screen. I'll show you that in a minute. Thank goodness for that. Right, the next screen is the SOS button setup. You can set up either guardians or vulnerable groups on there, or both. That's very handy. How do you know if it's working properly? Excellent question, Tommy. That just happens to be the next screen. There's a test button that tells you whether it's all working without actually contacting anyone or calling for emergency services, because that would be wasting their valuable time if there's nothing wrong. Oh, I don't want to do that! No, you don't. But don't let that put you off using it if you really need it. Now, let's look at the home screen. As you can see, you can report all kinds of things, and it's all very easy to use. And there's a second page as well. There's even a button for deaf people. 
that gives you access to this next screen so you can have full access to reporting anything you need. I think I might need that! Is that why you shout all the time, Tommy? Are you hard of hearing? A little bit, yeah! Well, thank you for telling me. Let's very quickly go through the different options from the home screen now so you know how to use them. Here is the theft, robbery and assault button. Now, the first thing that comes up when you press a lot of these buttons is a screen like this that asks whether what you're reporting is happening to you or to someone else. Once you've clicked one of those, you get to this screen where you can confirm what you're reporting. I've not clicked on that to see what happens next because I assume that's when the alert is sent. You don't want to do that. Indeed. So most of the other buttons from the home screen do more or less the same thing for whatever category you need to report, like aggression or fighting, sexual assault, gender violence, home invasion, radicalism, bullying, vandalism and damage, and there's one for lost or missing. And there's even one specifically for if you're walking the Camino, so it can track you in case you get into trouble. Now, the other ones you'll see for things like hate crimes, also give you explanations of what a hate crime is and how to report the crime. And there are similar explanations on the animal cruelty section. That's a lot of crime! It is. I think it's great they've got different buttons for the different crimes, so your alert goes directly to the right department that's expert in dealing with it. Are there any more things the app can do? Yes, I mentioned the GPS before. If you click on the map logo at the bottom of the home screen, it sends you to the page where you can see exactly where you are. It even tells you the address you're at across the bottom, unless you're in the mountains like me. Lovely! And if you press the three little dots where it says more at the bottom right of the home page, you get this screen where you can set up your data profile, your SOS settings, check up on any relevant news notifications and geolocalized services. And finally, there's a user guide and frequently asked questions, along with all of the legal stuff and accessibility declaration. Oh, and one last thing, there's a My Chats logo at the bottom of the home screen where you can find a record of all of the typing chats you've had with the various services on the app. Well, that's a fantastic app! It is. I would recommend it to everybody. Are there any more Andy apps? Yes, there are. I would suggest getting Wildfire Watch if you're in an area prone to wildfires. And there's also also, the 112 Where Are You app, which is a bit like the SOS button on Alert Cop. You can specify which emergency service. So I'd say if you see someone in distress in the water, for example, or something specific like that, then use that one. Put them side by side on your phone's home screen so you can see them easily and quickly. I feel a lot safer now. Marvellous. Are you happy, Tommy? Oh, I'm extremely happy! Excellent. Then it's worth clicking on the like button and subscribing. OK, then can we do the dance again? Why not? Peace and love. Peace and fluff. Oi, oi! Let's dance.